in sports entertainment. Pro wrestling talk from the four corners of parts unknown. This is That Wrestling Podcast. Welcome to That Wrestling Podcast. The good bad guys of wrestling podcasts are back. We're talking all things of the week that was in professional wrestling. And it's a bit shh, a bit quieter of a week, which I think is a good thing after last week. But we do have some fun topics to discuss. Let's get right to it after, of course, what are you wearing? What are you wearing? What are you wearing? What are you wearing today, today? What are you wearing? What are you wearing? What are you wearing today? All right, let's start things off. Joe, I think you've got one that might be a little bit timely. Yeah, it could be the last time wearing it. It's my <laughs> TWP 2.0 shirt. So, yeah, yeah. big change going on in the land of NXT. So well, we don't know 2. if it's 0. a big change. We don't know if it's a big change. We're Yeah, we're going to discuss to be what, determined what we think or what we kind of hope uh, in a little bit. But, yeah, that was a, a, a so good if, shirt from the collection. If it's a change that's determined, does that mean, Brian, you're out at, as host and we go back to Jason? Possibly. In theory, yes. Yeah. It's all up in the air. We'll see Where'd what you Shawn get Michaels that shirt? has to say. Where'd you oh, get that I got shirt, it at Joe? whatamaneuver.net at that wrestling podcast uh, store, TWP cool. 2.0, where you can also get uh, Bruise Next. You can get the TWP NWO style logo. You can get the Jason's favorite in a variety of colors. <laughs> There's a dinosaur in your anus <laughs> shirt and many, many more. Holidays yep. are coming. Yep. Well said, Joe. Buy Jay, the shirt. Jay, will you be cursing us? For our so bad I got, takes. <laughs> I got this Danhausen shirt in the You Fucked Up box for Pro Wrestling Tees. It was 10 shirts for $50, and it was random shirts that they had messed up. Now, I cannot figure out what is messed up about this. For a moment, I thought maybe they put the logo on the back, like because when I put the shirt on, I'm like, this feels a little weird, but no. Um, I don't really care why, what's wrong with it because it still looks cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's Dan that's Housen. that's Dan Housen. It's like it, it shouldn't be a spider web behind him. It should be like fireball. Or something. It's Dan I Housen's don't know. head, but Stevie Richards' body. I got yeah. it. That's that's the <laughs> problem. <laughs> Kevin, you you got a good one for uh, you. Uh, the the time of the year, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, Joe mentioned. Speaking of holidays coming up, I got this in uh, <clears throat> as we all did in the yes. Super <laughs> Crate last year. <laughs> Haven't worn it yet, and I'm wearing it like people wear their MLB hats at the game. I'm still rocking out the <laughs> WWE hologram sticker on. You it are because I this is the first time I've ever worn it. So you I swung buy. by the merch stand on your way to recording. I get it. It's cool. <laughs> so I tried to, I, in, in, in my closet, my wife was always like, you have so many wrestling shirts. You don't wear them every single time or once a year, every year. And uh, she's like, turn all your hangers one way. So I always know which wrestling shirts I haven't worn through the year you know, yet. So, yep. you know what, like Kevin, huh? I can't wait until you guys come to my house and I can show her the 10 totes in my garage. Plus what I have hanging in my closet. Plus what I have in my drawer in my closet of my wrestling shirts. So never say you have too many mm-hmm. wrestling shirts ever again. And you're welcome. But, but the main reason I wore it, you know, WWE, uh, beginning in 2015, they started recognizing uh, Pediatric Cancer Awareness Month. So it's September. This is the month that they, uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of the promos for, for yeah. Connor here. And they're always great to see, you know, the kids. And the, the cool thing is we're seeing them as like, the kids we saw years back, like growing older, bigger. So it's 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 cool to see throughout the years. At NXT, I thought, thought it was at kidding. NXT on Tuesday. Uh, Brooks and Dunn, they brought one of the kids out with them with the oh, girl. Nice. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. No. It's, oh, I don't awesome. know if their names. I don't know if their name is Brooks and Dunn, but that's yeah. just the easiest. You know, it is, you it know is who now. I'm talking about. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes. I do. They, they come out with um, Leanne Rhymes, I think, or whatever right. the country. Hey, Brian, Brian, who are you wearing today? Oh, nice. well, that was more dusty than what was than that? Yeah, it was. That <laughs> yeah, was that fun. was. Let me tell you, yeah. baby. No, um, <laughs> monkey like a monkey. Yeah, it, it's gonna be a, one of our, our theme for our five count. We're gonna get into some video games because uh, there was a, a national video game day the other day. Uh, so I got it's kind of wrestling a Jace because he, he's been 
uh, a WWF special referee. He's been like an AEW timekeeper or something. He's a Hall of Famer. He is a Hall of Famer. Yeah, Iron Mike Tyson. This is the uh, Mike Tyson's punch out shirt that Joe, you gave this to me, I think. Yeah, it was in the Toronto crate. Yeah, the Toronto crate. Who could ever Whatever. forget? So. Whatever. Okay. We're rocking that tonight. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll have some fun video game talk uh, a little bit later on in the show. So let's start things off. Um, one of the quote unquote insider wrestling Twitter accounts that I follow is at wrestle votes. Uh, they usually speak not so much about spoilers, but just about like what's happening backstage in WWE. So I, I kind of like that. Um, so he posted a tweet that caught my interest earlier in the week and it read the situation with the world titles and Roman reigns is complex. According to a source, they would like to go in the mania season and WrestleMania itself with two champions, but they also don't, don't want reigns losing at all. And he put that in all caps prior. I'm told triple H and company are open to all things creatively here. So guys, you heard it. Triple H needs our help. They want creative ideas presented on how they go to WrestleMania with two champs with Roman not losing at all. Let's go around the horn with our best, best pitches to Triple H on how we get two champs to Mania and Roman not losing. All right, I got two. First one's a little out there. Raw and SmackDown each have their own version of the purge. And the one that survives is your champion. So and I'm not saying you have to actually kill people. Okay, yeah. I didn't you could hurt them. Advocating. All crime is legal for 12 hours. Maybe instead of guns, it's paintball. Um, you know, maybe that kind of way. Make it a PLE on Peacock. And there you go. That's a little out there. Right. I get it. What Second one. <laughs> Roman Reigns said, d- creates his own championship. The tribal championship Ooh, says, man. I don't need these two becomes the tribal champion that allows him to go and come as he pleases. And then Ron Smackdown can figure out what to do with those titles. Okay. No killing involved. I like that. Did you, um, cause I went so far as I booked the mania title matches. Did you go that far? Um, no. Okay. No worries. No worries. I, I like that though. I like that because I like how like TNA and the Bay had like the legends championship and they created that um, not on the same level, but there's the FDW championship, which we know is not recognized, but there's a, a precedence for like having your own, you know, recognized and, title. And, and it would be one of that. And it would just be one of those things where it's like, he can do what he wants. So who gives a shit what he does. And yeah, you know, just tied in. You know, he, he he's not there much anymore. So, yeah, love it. Or the and, purge, whatever. And more more uh, merch because the Roman Tribal Chief Championship goes on sale. People Brian or uh, Ryan the Barber will buy that one too. <laughs> he, yes, he, <laughs> yeah. he is the belt collector. Uh, Kevin, you said off the air you have like arrows and note cards. And I, I do, I do. So, diagrams. So if if I was a full booker, this is how I'd want it. All right. It all revolves around Royal Rumble, right? San Antonio, it's going to be a big, big event. I see a fatal four-way match between Roman, Braun, Drew, and, and Cross, mm, okay? Okay. okay? With, uh, you know, the fir- first one with the pin. Roman doesn't take the pin, but the Rock's music plays at the end to kind of keep him, to catch him off guard, where Cross... Uh, I'll pins another TBD. I even put on my post a note, but Roman loses the match, doesn't take the pin. And that sets up Roman versus the rock for one of the belts at mania. Right. And then I put uh, for the other match, I put, of course, Cody winning the rumble challenging cross. So we have Roman rock one belt uh, cross uh, Cody other belt. And then that puts Roman beating rock going to raw where Cody will then be a full-time SmackDown uh, face. So you, you, I, I feel like SmackDown is SmackDown is amazing because there's so many villains, right? Not yeah. even bad guys, just villains, bad, bad dudes, not just heels. So I feel like Cody going there, Roman taking the flip-flop to Raw, a part-time, full-time, doesn't matter. It, it It's Roman. Uh, that's how I'd book it. Okay. You have a little bit of similar threads as mine. Uh, so l- let's 
Joe, if I can go to you next so we can kind of sure. break it up a little bit. All right, mine's uh, kind of definitely, I got the Fatal 4-Way going on or Triple Threat Match. You know what? We'll just stick, stick with the Triple Threat Match. Here we go. It turns into a Fatal 4-Way, though. Oh. Triple Threat Match, Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre versus Kevin Owens. Okay? Mm-hmm. And like WrestleMania 2000, when it was the triple threat match with Angle, he who shall not be named, and Jericho for the Intercontinental and European. First pinfall gets the oh. WWE Championship. The yep. second pinfall gets the Universal. This is how Love Roman it. can still win and lose the belt at the same time. Now, here's how it works out. I'm, I'm liking the idea of having it happen at Rumble. What happens is Sami Zayn is still honorary oos. He tries to interfere and he knocks the tribal chief out and the Usos start attacking Sami Zayn. Kevin Owens goes to make the save. That sets up Owens and Zayn versus the Usos for the tag championships at Mania. While Roman's knocked out, Drew's still outside in the ring doing something because that's what happens in a triple threat match. A-Town comes down and cashes in the money in the bank to get the WWE championship. Roman comes to Superman punch later. He wins the universal champion. So it starts as a triple threat Mm -hmm. turns into a fatal four way money in the bank is taken care of the tag championship between with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn back to being a face against the Usos. Roman still universal champion drew McIntyre. Sorry. You got to have someone in there who's, seems realistically could win but it's not it's not going to be his night wow so all right so i even have a little bit of similar things that you put in there so great minds all right yeah yeah so mine's mine's pretty involved i'll try to keep it timely but also make sure we spell it out so first off roman isn't scheduled for extreme rules this is what the word is so let's go to crown jewel november 5th Roman defeats Drew in a no DQ match, but Sami Zayn in that match accidentally nails Roman with the chair. So despite Roman still winning on the next SmackDown, Sami's kicked out of the bloodline. So that takes us to Survivor Series. we got four on four Survivor Series traditional match. The bloodline, Roman, Uso, Solo versus a reunited KO and Sami and the Street Profits. We get down to Roman versus KO. Those are the final two Austin Theory's music hits. It makes it a triple threat. Roman Spears Theory, one, two, KO sneaks and throws Roman out. He pins Theory. KO is your new undisputed champ. So the belts have been taken off Roman right now. Now, fast forward to Monday, but he didn't lose because Theory got pinned. Fast forward to Monday, Triple H says, Kevin Owens, you are a raw superstar. Both shows deserve a champ. So KO is going to remain champ at Raw. Triple H sets up a four-person tournament on SmackDown with the winner facing Roman on day one to crown the new champ. The the four competitors, we got two semifinal matches, Cross versus Drew and Braun versus Gunther. Cross and Braun win, and Braun wins the tournament, faces Roman at day one. Braun wins the championship after interference on Roman by The Rock. So now we got Braun as a champ. We got KO as a champ. The Royal Rumble, Cody comes back. He wins. He challenges Braun at Mania. KO is going to end up facing Seth Rollins and Sami Zayn in a triple threat. So it's KO versus two former partners for the Raw Championship. And we get Roman versus Rocket Mania with no title on the line because it doesn't need a title. It's as big a match as you're going to get. You don't need a championship for that match. Triple H, what do you think? <laughs> let, let me ask you one question. Did you just yeah. give yourself was, a pl- applause or you just no, like I, was, I was like, that was my like end scene. Yes. So was your Survivor Series match like for titles? No, no. Uh, is non-title. Traditional Survivor Series match. Yeah, so how, how, how would, if it was traditional Survivor Series, KO and, and, and Roman are the last two, how would it be for the title? Theory, theory came down and cashed in. So that makes it a title so match. So that makes it a title oh, triple threat okay. match. So that even, hasn't even been if done it's before. not a title, okay, I get you, I get you. It becomes because he can have a title match. Oh, that's any good. Time he wants so you destroyed mine. No, no, yeah, no. The only one You're that like Kevin was Dunn. The, the only one that stuck was the purge. 
Oh. <laughs> like so the other ones were good. Out. The no other ones were good. Yeah, okay. okay. But we have to no clear. We it's, um, it's more it's Squid Game. That's what no. It's more oh, carrying yeah. than killer. Yes. Um yes. before we go to the next one, someone wrote in the chat about bird is the word. Brian, did yeah. you know Larry Bird almost got drafted by the Buffalo Clippers? I did not. Uh-uh. Or the Braves then became the San Diego Clippers. Yeah. 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 It was this huge thing. I'm obsessed with the LA Clippers right now. Like I'm reading this book. It's called Curse. It's about the history of the <laughs> LA Clippers. That's a good so title. You, yeah. So you and Billy Crystal are like obsessed with the Clippers. Got well, <laughs> years ago, I asked an, an actual NBA general manager, why are the Clippers so bad? And he goes, I don't know. I can't tell you. Well, this book is telling me. And there was this big thing about the former owner of the Celtics got booed out of the building during Havlicek's uh, retirement ceremony. And then the guy that owned the Braves, they made a trade and he took the the braves and took them to san diego and there was a draft thing and unreal larry bird almost was a san diego clipper man how how different would my life be yeah that's why i brought that up i I would have like clippers jerseys in my you would be like man michael olo and candy was like the best center (laughs) ever but like legit i am i am this is a thick fucking book too so I am obsessed right now with the Clippers. Chapter seven, Baron Davis comes to town. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's um, awesome. Man. Danny, not the Manning. Yeah. Is in- <laughs> Number one pick. All right. Our, our next week, five count top five Clippers of all time. Um, <laughs> all right. So let's, Ron let's, Harper. Number one. <laughs> I love yeah. Ron Harper. Um, all right. So on Tuesday, and we alluded to this with Joe Shirt, NXT, they celebrated their one year anniversary of NXT 2.0. Uh, solid show from what I saw. I didn't see all of it, but I, I liked what I saw. And I, I feel like the past couple of months and Jay, you've been a proponent of it, too. Uh, I think it's really started to hit its stride after what you know I thought, in my opinion, was a, a rocky couple of months to start. Uh, so after. Solo Sokoa beats Carmelo Hayes, becomes the new North American champ, which that's hopefully going to be fun for SmackDown to have him with a a belt now that he's with the the bloodline full time. Uh, The show ends with a video package narrated by Shawn Michaels. And he basically says NXT is focused on developing superstars while acknowledging the past and constantly evolving. And then the colorful NXT 2.0 logo morphs away to a new logo with bright white NXT letters and kind of outlined black and gold and the 2.0 disappears. So it is, it's unclear on like what this exactly means for an NXT brand moving forward. So we don't know if it's going back to the black and gold days, or is it like a a hybrid of 2.0 because the the font still the same as the 2.0 font. Um, But nevertheless, we'll, we'll see what happens, but guys, what, what would you like to see? out of the NXT brand as it moves forward. What's going to move the needle for you? They already started it. They've taped the next two weeks. They're getting it recorded ahead of time. So it's a smoother transition instead of like making the mistakes on live TV. The next two weeks have been taped. I'm not, I didn't read the spoilers or anything, but when I saw spoilers next two weeks, I'm like, all right, they're, they're going to make it a more polished product for when they can go back to being live because like we we've said it's been kind of sloppy it started off well and then it got kind of sloppy here and there. still good but now we can have it even better like it was at the beginning when they were recorded and played a week later yeah what so is that the the appeal that would make you be more of like a, a regular watcher is like just i i think it will i think out? it will make i think it will Give it a give them a chance to look at it after they're done recording it to see what's working and what's not. Like there yeah. can't be any bad on this when we're trying to when we like we're part of it. Yeah, we're in creative. When we they're trying are to re- NXT, when they're language. trying to rebuild a brand, I like the idea yeah. that it's uh taped. Okay, I may Jay, be the only one. Yeah. Jay, what do you want moving forward NXT? Um, I want them to drop the two point Mm-hmm. If they want to make it gold and white and black, cool. Mm-hmm. needs to be the same. I don't want any changes. I like the roster. I like the people that are there. It is what it is there for. It's developmental, and yeah. I am all for it. Kev? I, I, I like Triple H coming out a couple, a little bit of time ago, said NXT is our third brand. 
right? Because it went from, yep, we wanted the third brand to nope, it's strictly developmental. He mentioned third brand again. I do like it that they're bringing uh, some main roster people back here and there. I don't want a one, one time stay. I like Mandy. I'll use Mandy Rose as a perfect example, right? Decent on the main roster, could have honed in her skills a little bit, went to NXT, blossomed, right? Like a uh, must see. Like a rose. Is she, it, 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 yeah. No. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> is she ready for the main roster again? Close. Very, very close. Right. Said HBK teaching her. That's why. But that's, 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 but that's, that is the exact, but that's the exact example of what I would want to see. If a main roster person needed a little assistance, go there. Not just a, a, a like a ricochet. That was the one timer thing, you know, to help the, to help their event. That did you guys see Carmelo and Ricochet from Worlds Collide? Still have yes. that match was fucking yeah. insane. But for a good it. one time off event, like yeah. a, like a, 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 a like a special event. There right? was Not, there was Ricochet's a, never going to go down there for an extended period of time. They never. I mean, he said he was there so i mean he may stick around because there's yeah, nothing, nothing for him on the main roster Apo so apollo cruz is hanging around right now so. yeah kevin remember you know, finn balor went that. finn balor went back and reinvented himself there sure. so well, why not well, let me ask you this though okay so they go are they stealing a developmental person's roster spot to get to get time i say the answer no. for me is, maybe yeah it is getting season talent to work with developmental yeah, see but if you go oh, that awesome. if you go that spot i i would prefer nxt back in the day where we got a finn from from the indies and a nakamura from the indies to go help with those that's what AEW, you have that it's called yeah. aew that's aew no. kevin we need nxt to be straight up performance center to NXT to main roster. They then why would you be... ever want Ricochet or or, or main roster? Because they already there had for a long time. They, are, they already had him. This is like he's an NXT guy. He's an NXT guy, and he came to NXT before there was a AEW. AEW is where they can get let, the. Let me uh, ask you indies. this: then. It's when, when was your favorite NXT? But we gotta look at the future. One hundred percent. No, can't just, look when, at the when past. was your favorite? When was your favorite NXT? Present or past? And when? What era? I like what's going on right now. Nope, that's perfect, Joe. For the last year, I've said, I love this. I like the presentation. I like the lights on. I like the bright colors. I like the different music. I mean... Well, it's all going away. So you're last I don't think year, it is. Maybe. I don't think it is. I don't you know. don't think the bright colors are going away? The, uh, the bright no. colors, but a bright white, you know? Like that, that's just that logo right it's there. More it's more polished. It's, yeah. It's, it's definitely not, I've seen online. Some people call it like, you know, like NXT Nickelodeon because of all the colors. Right. So that, that seems to be going away. It appears from the logo. Um, but that was when, when the, they had the first episode of 2.0, that was something that I thought was a positive was the old NXT, whether it was, you know, taped at full sale or at the performance center, like you could barely see the crowd. It was always dark. It was very dingy. Right. And that, that has some charm, I guess, but when they turn on the lights and you could see the crowd and like get more reaction to the fans that I like, I like just that for at that aesthetic. Um, what I want to see moving forward, I think what they're doing is fine, but I think it's just a bigger picture of what they're doing with NXT being acknowledged on the main roster. Yes, it's still developmental, but I hear it in the main roster commentary of, gosh, there was a match. It was the women's tag match this past Monday. Raquel and uh, Aaliyah. And they against, mentioned Dakota. Yeah, like, oh, they were, partners. they were NXT tag team champions. I mean, that, that was a little while ago and, you know, no love lost or whatever. So that's my biggest thing is, and that seems like it's being delivered is acknowledging what NXT is for when these guys and girls get on the main roster as part of their history, you know, part Instead of, just of the pretending character. it didn't happen. I exactly. Agree. Not, not the switcheroo of, you know, completely new names or anything like that uh, with, unless it's like, you know, a, a thing that was done at the beginning. Um, that's my biggest thing, but yeah, I, I love seeing the new talent. Um, you know, it still has its NXT charm of like, Oh, the parking lot's bad. Everybody gets died in the parking lot. And there's backstage things, right? And there's there's silly things that they do. Um, but yeah, that's my biggest thing is just show the NXT brand the respect 
for these wrestlers. So when they go to the main roster, the continuation happens because that was when you talk about favorite eras, Kevin, that would be my answer is just like, how excited were we when the four horsewomen went up to the main roster? When mm-hmm. Kevin Owens made to the rain roster and they, they were just an extension. Samoa Joe, they were extended from NXT on there. And it was just like, yes, Nakamura is another one. Right. So those were my biggest takeaways. Just moving forward, do whatever you're doing and just don't whitewash it when it gets to the main roster. Drink, here, of, here. drink some water. All right. Yes. <laughs> Next. Thanks for. <laughs> Here's awesome. your clap, Brian. Yeah, buddy. All right. So this was overshadowed clearly by last week's um, punk elite drama. Uh, MJF making his AEW return. Obviously, that was huge AEW news. But again, we didn't really touch on it even too much because it was just such a a crazy, crazy week. So we we touched on the return promo from uh, last week's Dynamite. And, you know, in in MJF fashion, he continued to name drop WWE. Mentioned Triple H, Nick Khan, yada, yada, right? And gosh, he's he's just playing it up online so good. Uh, you guys probably saw the picture of him and Rosenberg, right? Like, he's just he's just playing it up. So one person had a differing opinion on this, and this is what we're going to discuss here. Uh, former WWE ref Jimmy Corderas he shared that he has a problem with MJF doing that. Uh, he says. Look, a big debate about the promo from MJF on Wednesday night. Yes, he's fantastic on the mic, but all those references to the other company and the game and all that sort of stuff, it draws big time attention to the other company, especially coming from one of your biggest stars who that audience knows all the inside behind the curtain goings on about him, possibly reaching out to the other side or them reaching out to him and all that sort of stuff. Uh, He says, look, ignore the other team. That was the biggest downfall for WCW when they were in competition for WWE. They didn't ignore them. They kept referencing them. Ignore them. Stick to your business. Grow your audience that way. Guys, we've we've talked about this a little bit in just AEW in general. Referencing WWE, usually in a negative way, like putting them down. This is kind of the opposite because MJF's a heel and Uh he's promoting the free agency going to WWE is kind of a way to piss off the live crowd. So... I want to know where you guys kind of stand on this. Do you do you wish MJF would stop with these references? Kev, you can go. I personally love it. I I, I love every bit of it, but it, it's it's selective, and this is why. I think the, he he mentioned you know Triple H because Mox was a WWE guy, right? It can't work for every single person. If he was standing across from Sammy or Darby, he wouldn't say the things he could say that he could say to a CM Punk or a Mox. So it's selective, right? Yeah. I, I, I love it. So in, in different situations, because MGF, love him or hate him, heel, pretending to be a good guy, doing whatever he needs to do on the mic. He has everyone in the palm of the hands, right? Yeah. In, in, in like MGF fashion, it was, it was fire. Everything he does is fire. I think in the certain situations, fantastic stuff. He can't do it to everybody. And he can't yeah. do it all the time, right? But when he when when the time's right and he does it, I'm I'm there and I'm just like, oh, mm-hmm. I I I love it. I get the Kevin, uh Can you please hit the breaking news sounder? I don't know if you guys watch the Bear on FX. I don't, but wow. this story is about the star of the bear called Jeremy Allen White, uh, found his first big project to keep him busy during the show's hiatus. Sources tell Deadline that White is set to co-star opposite Zac Efron and Harris Dickinson's in The Iron Claw, which the three will play the world-famous wrestling siblings, the Von Erics. How oh, cool. awesome is that? Ooh, that's cool. As a world-class fan yeah. and the Von Erics and the... I, I, Love it. I absolutely love it. And it's based on the true story of the Von Erics. The film follows the rise and fall of the family dynasty of wrestlers who made a huge impact on the sport from the 60s to present day. That is awesome. I can't it, wait for that. So which say, one's the like, Texas tornado? Uh, yeah, it's it's um, Z- yeah. Zach Efron will be Carrie. That's my guess. Yeah. Um, 
Jeremy Allen White will play Kerry Von Eric. Oh, never mind. <laughs> playing Kevin and Dickinson okay. playing David. So gotcha. Zach Efron's the only one that is still, al- or you know, Kevin's the only one still alive. So yes. they need the guy with the biggest name to stay alive. That's Zach Efron. So. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, Does not, it say not that not network or? Uh, My guess no, is it'll probably be on like Apple Plus or yeah, Apple Hulu TV or Netflix or. Yeah, oh, is I'm it a TV show or a movie? Well, I'm movie. guessing it's going to be, it it's looks like be it's a, a movie, but I'm yeah. guessing it won't go to theaters. It will go to a streamer. Right. That's yeah, I'm guessing streamer too, but wow. Which this quite is... honestly, you'll get more eyes on it than in yeah. the theater. You know, Clerks 3 opens today and I didn't only even know. At, but it's what? only showing for one week, one showtime per day, which yeah. is so weird. How weird. It's like, it's only, but... at, it's only showing at 7 PM for one week and it's a $15 ticket to get in. And then it'll be a streamer next week. But uh, it'll be a streamer. All right. So there's that's a cool plan. Back to our regularly scheduled that yeah. wrestling podcast. MJF, yay or nay on WWE references, Jay? I, it doesn't bother me. Um, what does bother me is the fact that they put MJF with fucking Stokely and the Ass Boys and Morrissey. Right? Is yeah. That yeah. Mm-hmm. And I know he's not technically in the faction, but come on. It should have been a one time deal. Now, yes, I wanted to know the connection. I don't like the connection. Keep, he doesn't need a faction. Mm-hmm. He can talk about WWE all he wants because that just shows he's not going to WWE in 2024. So I'm all for it. Okay. Fuck the firm. <laughs> Joe? I think they need something because. Before Punk got there, I mean, there were the pillars of AEW. There are no pillars anymore. It's all ex-WWE guys. Even like the tournament Wednesday night was three seventy-five percent of them were ex-WWE guys. <clears throat> and then Sammy loses, and it's like, okay, we're going to have a WWE guy versus a WWE guy again. Like, that, he has to win because the pillar, who were they again? Darby. Sammy, MJF, and Jungle Boy. And then they then yeah. Punk got rid of MJF and put Britt Baker on there. Okay, so you have five pillars, I guess. But yeah. what have they all been doing? This has been a like a total X WWE fest, so they don't need to mention the competition because they showcase them every week. So I'm hoping that like he can mention it, but I just hope that the pillars rise in 2023. Oh, that, that sounds like a t-shirt slogan right there. I like that. The pillars rise. Yeah. I, I'm with you guys. I, I haven't liked it in the past. Like there's one instance I can remember when uh, fish and O'Reilly were new to AEW and they had a backstage segment with the bucks and they were like, Oh, like, you know, you think you can do something here? Like what did you graduate from hip top? hip toss class you know over like the talk about the developmental and i was like rolling my eyes like when those lines come up it's like oh geez but i think just because it's mjf and he is a heel and i think that's the same reason why along with that i've i've enjoyed the concept of the jericho appreciation society because it's like you're just going to boo me because we're sports entertainers right so like there there's something because it's part of the story that it's fine with me. It's not just a, a knock just to do a knock and feels cheap. It's part of his gimmick. It's part of his character. You know what? We have no idea, you know, what this contract situation will be in 2024. Uh, Jay could certainly be right about, Oh, he's certainly resigning because why is he even doing that? Um, you know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge down the road. Uh, but yeah, it, it's one of those cases where, and you know, probably a little bit because He's just so damn good. You know, you just let him do what he does. He's so good. It just, it just works. It absolutely works. So, you know, re- respect your opinion, uh, Jimmy Corderas, but I think, uh, I think you're four for four on a thumbs down on <laughs> your thoughts on this one. So let's he talk. Sound, about- he sounds more like angry old man yelling at cloud with that one. It's like, you can't be stuck in the past. Move on. Yeah. Yeah, again, because it's part of the story and everything else that I think it's it's different than just to go like, you know, yuckity yuck yup up north is bad, boo, right? So, you know, little little nuances make a difference, I'd say. 
September 12th. Did you guys celebrate the holiday? National Video Games Day. Who's that's celebrating? every day for Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. No, that's every day. I celebrate it every day. Okay. Okay. So yeah, the three of you guys still very much into video games. Me, not so much. Um, we're we're going to get into our five count, talk about some wrestling games here in a second, but let's just, let's riff a little bit about our, our experiences with video games. Like when did you start, uh, your first console, your first like favorite games that you played, uh, Kev, you've, you've kind of been crowned the, the video game yeah. champ of the crew here. So I, I, start us off. I, I love them. Right. I, I am. I love everything. Mario brothers, right. Mine, when my son was born. His his nursery was was level one one across the four walls, like to the to the exact T. I bought the decals online. It was it was almost an identical replica to the exact level one one. Uh, <clears throat> fun story. So, I, I I grew up right without a lot of money. Right, my mom was a single mom. We didn't have a lot of money, but. Uh, my love for video games started actually <laughs> hanging out with my buddy, uh, Alan, right. From the, Fucking uh, Alan. exactly yeah. that Alan. Alan, uh, just, just always going to his house and shut up Alan, the, the NES. Cause he, he grew up with a lot of money. Right. So when, when there's a bundle, the, so that's why he had the wrestling buddies. He grew up with a lot of money and the Nintendo. Nah, yeah. fucking Alan. So, so when, when the bundle came out with, uh, the power pad, the light gun oh, and, uh, yeah. in Marvel, and the robot that did nothing. The robot. So, so yeah. uh, uh, it wasn't Rob, but it was uh, uh, an ABC warehouse. Okay. I think it was $199. Uh, they made a misprint in the ad, right? At no point we, my mom could ever afford this, right? And they put it, it was either 19.9. There was a weird dot. So my mom went. To ABC That's warehouse no and the Adam was like, you're giving us this. So, so oh that Christmas, my. yeah, like wrapped it up and, and we got it from, and I, I, I forget how old I was, seven, eight years old. Uh, but before then, you know, Atari, but then getting that, it was like my love for Nintendo started and, and I won't go into two, three hours of my video games through the years, but just that moment on, right? I, I just love video games. And I grew up a big nerd. You know, Kevin, popular. you should you should do a gaming show on our YouTube channel. That'd be awesome. I, I'm really thinking about it. So 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 I was looking at today of like what games I have with like world records and different things like that. So that might be coming up as a TWP exclusive. All right. So for me, uh, Atari 2600. That was yeah, the first one. Yeah. And it was Pac-Man. I believe, I, I think Pong was a part of it, but my favorite yeah. game on the Atari was Pitfall. Nice. Yes. Favorite. Everyone's, Pitfall. everyone's favorite Pitfall. game on Atari. Love Pitfall. Uh, Can I jump then, over the that Nintendo, alligator? Then the Nintendo, uh, Excitebike, favorite, RC Pro-Am, favorite. Nice. And then, you know, moving on to, you know, next-gen consoles and stuff. Like, you know, I have a Switch and I've got an Xbox One X and, you know, I've got PS5. I have them all. I barely play them. I got a modded out mini NES with like 6,000 games on it. So like, I don't know. I wish I had more time, but um, yeah, those are my memories and games and yeah. yeah. Mario's cool too. Mario's um, man. I'll, I'll, I'll go. I guess yeah, I, I start, I start with Atari as well and love, love pitfall. Did uh did you have tank, Jay? I think so. Yeah. Oh, is that where you like? There's like little blocks. Yeah, just like a square. <laughs> yes, and you're like and you just could shoot the other. Isn't tank. that all of Atari? Yeah, just squares yeah. and rectangles. They, I think they had a they had planes. They had a plane version, and yes. that could be a, uh, airplanes. Um, asteroids was another one, and um, I remember my my late grandmother. Her, the one game that she would play with me on Atari was fishing <laughs> you would just literally drop your fishing pole in the water and try to catch the fish that would go by that's something a grandma would like old people love fishing so um I, I got my there's originals oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that season's coming up stay tuned for more on that um and then yeah nintendo i mean it was the same thing like like you kev or like my neighborhood yeah. friends had it first 
And I begged for Christmas, begged, 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 begged. And, and Joe, you'll appreciate it because my mom tried to pull the um, Christmas story of the BB guns behind the couch gimmick, you know, and like halfway through Christmas, I said, what's this behind the couch? Go, don't, don't pay attention to that. Uh, that was the Nintendo with, of course, a t- uh, p- uh, Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. And of then uh, I'm wearing the shirt, P- Tyson's Punch Out. 007-373-5963. It's all you got to say. If you know what I'm, if I'm saying, then you know what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, I, I've, I've grown out of it. Uh, Jay, thank you. You gave me the, the loaded super Nintendo retro. So I, I love playing that from time to time. And my, my uh, oldest Harper is into that now. So um, still brings a lot of enjoyment, even though I'm not really into the, the new scene uh, and Joe. I didn't have Atari starting off. I had in television. If anyone remembers wow. that I know in television, name was the atari knockoff basically Mm -hmm. where the controller was like a remote control like a calculator (laughs) like one through nine and you would put little pieces of plastic above there to play baseball so you just press the button to where the ball you throw the ball to or whatever uh then it went to the nintendo uh christmas 88 8 bit Christmas, the movie pretty much like was my whole year that year, and we ended up getting it. It was awesome. Sega Genesis, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, uh, Xbox 360. I wanted the Connect, uh, Nintendo Wii. My wife wanted that for the uh, the Wii Fit. Um, then we got the Legends Arcade that Kevin helped me uh, hook up. And we actually like my wife is actually because we're both teachers and she likes to throw on like the planning calendar game night where we have to go downstairs and play the arcade because she's uh, (laughs) she really only plays Qbert, but sometimes we'll like throw some other old school games in there. But yeah, I I wish I had more time for them. Even in the summertime, it's like I could, but it's way too nice out. So I don't want to be trapped indoors. And my students love it for the simple fact that they know I like games. So they think like, you know, this teacher's cool. It's like, you got games. Uh, and it's like, boy, they, they, had the, wrong. they got the retro ones Fooled and everything. Them. Oh, yeah. yeah. We do a wrestling podcast. We got a lot to say. So there's a throwback. There it you, is. Joe, right? There That's it the is. In television. The in television. Yes. Oh, and, yeah. you a, and you put a little tiny like plastic sleeve and it would either be like the baseball diamond or like downhill skiing and oh, things God. like that. Yeah. And you had the controller on the side to move the guys. Yeah, yeah, I remember that thing. You know, it's nice. It, it's like you can uh, uh, play baseball or call Tommy Tatone on that controller. <laughs> uh, yes. Shout out to uh, Mark Caboli. He's a Steelers beat writer for The Athletic. And he posted that picture this morning, actually. So when you said it, I was like, wait what? a second. And, and I, as he as he uh, put the tweet, he the tweet with the picture, he goes, and, and Joe, you'll have to yell at him. But he goes, if you are under 45 or over 50, you have no <laughs> idea what that is. <laughs> but I, I do, the, and I'm under 45. I know. You're breaking the the his his theory. I went, I rode the bus with Mark Caballi in high school. Oh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. He's from Bel- he's from Belvern. Yeah. Okay. Can we get him on the podcast to talk to the Steelers? Probably wrestling? not. Uh, Probably. Just get him on you take you that wrong. photo from your grandma's house. <laughs> I've, I've already got one connection with Jason Jones and a writer for the Athletic. So maybe we can get two for two if we uh, do our, nah. our player box. Yeah. The funny thing is the box that's in the corner has like my I still have my Genesis and all the games in there. I just don't know where to put it. I don't have anywhere else to hook it up at because yeah. they don't have the coax cables anymore that you can like the tvs now you can't play them unless unless you get well they still have the coax sure they make adapters online they do that's how i play my 64 if you only knew somebody who was like psycho about video games and has every attachment in the world at his house attachments are available but the thing is though uh the game i would only really want to play on there i couldn't anyway it would be lethal enforcers because it came with the light gun and light guns don't work on uh, flat screens. Oh, it uh, seems like you got to come to my house and play with the fun adapter on my TV. <laughs> uh, why are we talking? Forcers. Why are we talking video games? It's National Brian Video Game. Yeah, oh, National Video oh, Game Day the right. other night. And but what about wrestling just... video games? Yes, yeah, thanks exactly. for listening. Well said. I, I think you guys did a good job of setting that up for us. That's this week's five count topic. It's our five favorite video games that are wrestling video games. That wrestling podcast presents the five count. Or 
five favorite wrestling video games. <laughs> one, one, one more time. You want to try another way of five, the same thing? Five favorite sports entertainment games. No. Okay. Okay. Um, Kevin, you you were, were kind yeah. of crowned video game champ, so I'll let you go first because maybe yeah, you have so the I, widest selection to choose I did. from. I've got so I, I, I one of my favorite systems of all time are the is the Nintendo sixty four, right? So uh, number five just uh, happens to be a Nintendo sixty four game, WWE Warzone. Wow, loved it. It kind of got away from the the arcade style. It was kind of going a little bit away from like you know the WWF two thousand. Uh, some of my other ones right here, the arcade style, which is actually AEW. What fight forever? Is getting back the new into one that they're working on yeah. the arcade style. So I, I'm very excited for that. Uh, number number four, uh, WWF the arcade game. I have it for my Sega Genesis. My Sega Genesis box is deep into the attic. Couldn't get to it, uh, so I didn't pull it out. Uh, number three is actually a tie because they're just so similar. These two WWE or I'm sorry, WCW NWO revenge and WCW NWO world tour. They're almost identical games. One just happens to be somewhat better graphics than the other, uh, but they play exactly the same. Like no, no simulation. It's like grapple, press up, power bomb, press down pile driver. It's very, very formulatic. Uh, number two, uh, couldn't find this bin in my attic either because it's way in the back. W, uh, WF WrestleMania for the NES. And then I know this one's going to be on Joe's list. Uh, if it if it's not, I'll be very, very embarrassed to be his friend. Uh, WrestleFest, number one. I just, uh, arcade cabinet. Joe looks like he's pooping his pants right now. Uh, for not really. People listening. Uh, I just love it. It's my number one game that I always played in the arcade uh, and that's one of the main reasons why I want to get my arcade cabinet at home so I can play WrestleFest at home. Beautiful. Uh, nicely done. Nicely done. Uh, Jay, you could go next, I suppose. Fun fact, I hate wrestling video games. <laughs> Sweet. Whoa, that is a Joe's fun next. Fact. I'm terrible at these games. There's too many button combinations. Um, so what I've done is I, whatever I have handy, That'll be my five count. First up <laughs> at number five for the PS2, Fire Pro Wrestling Returns. <laughs> I nah. never played it. I bought it because it's wrestling. <laughs> it looks cool on itself. Number four, Legends of Wrestling 2 for the PS2. Wow. Another game I've never played, but I have it because it's wrestling and it looks good on the shelf. You can play um, Bret Hart Number on three. And Andy Kaufman. SmackDown, shut your mouth. Never played it. Looks good on a shelf. Number two. Sensing the pattern. SmackDown versus Raw. There's a bunch oh, of years there. Wow. Uh, wow. Never played them. Got them for like $2 a piece. They look great on the shelf. And number one. Bring the pain. I've never played it. I've had it for a while now. 2K22. Hey, now. Okay. Next. Okay. Okay. Dude, who has um? Who has the new one? How is That's it? it, and I have it too. It did not make my five count because okay. I've only played it right. a few times, so I haven't really got into it. Kevin WrestleFest did not make my five count for the simple wow. fact I knew it would be on somebody's, so I didn't want to have a repeater. So it would have been, but I also picked everything that I could, like Jason did, actually show. And nice. I'm not bringing my arcade cabinet up here or the pillow that I got in the Christmas grate. That was a so, nice pillow. Here we go. Number five, and you did a tie. This one is not really a tie because they actually married each other. It was the only time they did this. SmackDown versus Raw 2009 and Legends of WrestleMania came out at the same time. Oh, wow. If you bought them both, this roster could be played on this game. Oh. So these guys and gals went to Legends of WrestleMania. So you could play like, you know, DX versus Hogan and Andre at WrestleMania 9. So it was the oh, first cool. time they like so that's why I got both of these and this one this one plays more like you know the up down like but this one has more of the arcade like you know press the square button now so there's my number 5 Rest, 
Legends of WrestleMania and SmackDown vs. Raw 2009 because you could play both at the same time. Number four for Xbox 360, it had the great Attitude Era storyline. <sighs> WWE 13, the one with CM Punk, changed the Attitude oh, okay. yep. one. It was after they got rid of the WWE 12, which Randy Orton, which was like terrible. So they fixed all the glitches in that one. Number three is just fun. All stars, yes. This game's just fun. They like it's so over the top, and it was the one that Macho Man did a commercial oh, for. Oh yeah, that was what before he died. He it was like yep. it was showing that he was the door was open for him yep. to return, and then he died like two months later. Very sad, but I mean, his he had the the great production video crew for WWE did montages like videos of the two legends facing off so like stone cold versus cm punk they did a video yeah. package for for theirs um macho man versus john morrison they did a video package hogan versus cena they did a video package like they did they went above and beyond to make it seem like it was legit so and this one's just fun because it's so over the top wasn't that the game where they did a face-to-face -face austin and punk with jim ross and it got mm -hmm. a little tense. I think so. Yeah. Yes. Uh, number two, because it's been the best uh, DLC package I ever bought for a game. Actually, it's the only one. For PlayStation 3, WWE 2K14. Mm. The Rock's on the cover, but they had the alternate cover with Daniel Bryan because it was like right at the height of the Yes movement. The DLC that you could buy was the NWO package where if you bought it now it's $120 but this one was like 10 bucks and you got Macho Madness uh NWO you got three versions of Hall and Nash you got the Diesel Razor NWO NWO version and Outsider versions of each one wow. it's a game that has Scott Steiner as Big Papa Pump from the NWO in it and okay. Kurt Henning so it's like they N6 they basically had the NWO galore galore on this one I still play it because of how great the roster is. And number one, because I own it. These are all ones I owned. Yep. Here comes the nice. pain. Smackdown, so PlayStation good. 2. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about this, it has the best roster because it was all, it was right after Invasion mm -hmm. a year later. So they're all the guys around here in their prime. But the only downfall of this game, not the gameplay, but there's no, they're not talking. It's all subtitles with, terrible background uh, music plan interesting uh i always hear too when i just you know video game wrestling things on twitter pop up uh that there's so much love for the no mercy game i never you guys see that? i didn't have it so i yeah. can't i couldn't judge i always see that there are like no mercy is this like this is a coveted game for whatever reason if you're i was a playstation guy so i never i never played it just like i only only nintendo 64 game i played with goldeneye yeah yeah all right well i'll wrap things up uh, my number five is the wrestle fest because i love playing that at kevin or joe's house uh, since i've been there so that's my number five uh my number four um what do you guys had it on there wcw nwo revenge uh for n64 my buddy nick had that and that was you know just that uh, you had that one kev yeah that was just a, a really fun one with just a fun time of wrestling uh that i get to play that one a lot number three i think was on your list too kevin wrestlemania the arcade game it's still um it at one of the like my local restaurants that i go to so if, if they have in their oh. arcade i you play that and i just love i love because it's that terrible new generation time where Razor Ramon and Doink and Lex Luger, all American, right? Yokozuna. Like, yeah, it's just it's, it's not, none none of the, the NWO. It's Rolling not the classic. Razor Razor's uh yeah. slash. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Well, Brian, so that's a that is one. available on our arcade too. So if you don't okay. want to play WrestleFest, you can do the arcade game as well. Good, good to know. Uh, number two, uh, WWF WrestleMania Challenge for NES. Um, that was one I had and love playing that one growing up. I, I love that. Um, I think the two guys I played the most were uh, Brutus the Barber, because you could put the sleeper hold on people. So I love doing that. And Big Boss Man had like this like running like belly smash. <laughs> like, you know, you remember that? I don't even think he did that in real life, but he did that in the game. And I, I always love doing that. And number one, no one said it. 
And this is my I, I, number one. I know what you're going to say. I think I do, too, because I'm like, man, I wish I would have thought of it. Uh, three, three, two, one. Pro, pro wrestling. wrestling. Yeah. Starman. Oh, yeah, Starman. Starman. The one with Starman. Yeah. King Slender. The Amazon. Giant Puma. Oh, the I'm, Amazon. Oh, yeah, the Amazon. I love that game. I, I think because obviously that was my favorite time with Nintendo, but I love that each character had their own style, right? They all had their own like finishers. Like Starman could do a fucking like tope over the rope to the outside. And he'd do that fucking like drop kick 360 flip. He, he'd be perfect for like the AEW trios division now. <laughs> He's like Ray Phoenix from back in the day though. Um, so yeah. That when, when oh, Jay, great. You, now Starman is all elite will be popping Starman up. is all. <laughs> I'm looking. Somebody probably already did that already. Um, but yeah, Jay, when you uh, gifted the Super NES and that was on there, that was one of the first ones I played. And uh, uh, King Slender, uh, I beat him surprisingly easily. So I was like, oh, and, and it's over. I won the game. Uh, but back in the day, it was it was tough shit. So love that game. A lot of fun with the wrestling games. Uh, so everybody had a good National Video Games Day. That's this week's five count. Who made your five count? Let us know on social media using the hashtag TWP5Count. All right, that'll about do it for this week, but we have to talk a little bit about the NFL picks. If you checked out our Facebook page, and Jay, did this make this onto our Instagram or TikTok at all, the, the video? because It I went am... to TikTok. Okay. Instagram is being weird, so okay. I just gave up. Gotcha. So, gotcha. But it's on no TikTok. At Beautiful. That Check that out. So uh, we we have launched uh, the the third and what I believe is the final season of Brett and Harper doing the picks uh, after week one. Brett is up 3-0. Perfect week. Wow. For the t- yep. Brett's the, coming strong. He had a good say what? Um, <laughs> for, He's six. Yeah, I know. Um, You're a- let's keep it moving. Uh, <laughs> Brett um, and Harper had the same picks of Chiefs. And the Chargers. Uh, but in the third game, Brett had the Bucks. Harper had the Cowboys. Dak Prescott, Prescott broke his thumb. And uh, the Bucks ended up getting the win. So 3 0 win. Brett is in the lead. And the, the three games we'll be doing this week are Bucks and Saints, Dolphins and Ravens, and Bears and Packers. And we also had a, a little glimpse into uh, Brett's future, Kevin, with his uh, baton twirling um, talents. Who knew he would take it this far? It's uh, uh, I think we, if we had a hundred views, I'm pretty sure 99 of them were, were Brett and I watching. I'm so it's cause I'm old <laughs> <laughs> today. Uh, j- just as a glimpse, uh, <coughs> Brett is a, uh, uh, Living his best spark plug Holly. Uh, oh yes, there's a pretty this week. For you. Yep, we'll we'll look for that. I know uh, you and I talked about maybe doing some reaction videos too. Yeah. Uh, so so we might have some little little extra bonuses with the NFL picks. So um, we'll we'll move forward on to week number two. Um, other than that, yeah, guys. Uh, of course, thank you for listening to the show. Uh, check us out on. Uh, YouTube, of course, and, and all the socials, the TikTok and everything. And OJ, oh, you are going to SmackDown tonight. So uh, have Damn. fun with that. Thanks. Everybody, um, be on the lookout for, <laughs> for, for Jay. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, yeah. How kind of you. All right, guys. Hey, enjoy wrestling. He'll have his one up in the air. Just look for him in the crowd yes, with his yes. one in the air. Do you know what shirt you'll be wearing, Jay? Can we Can we get that or is that still two to be determined? I don't know, man. I don't, right. I don't, I don't know. Right. It will not be an AEW shirt because that breaks J Fabe. True. That's true. Yeah. We can already eliminate that from, from the rotation. So yep. maybe we'll, we'll get an update on, on Twitter. So enjoy the show. Hey everybody. Enjoy wrestling. Thanks for listening to this week's that wrestling podcast. Thanks for listening. Follow that wrestle pod on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. One, two, three. That's it. Thanks for watching That Wrestling Podcast on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And for more That Wrestling Podcast content, follow at That WrestlePod on social media.